Mike German is joining us from Washington, D.C., National Security po Policy Council for the American Civil Liberties Union. He was an FBI agent specializing in domestic counterterrorism for uh, many years. Mike, talk about your assessment of this widening dragnet and its consequences. Well, I think part of the problem is, is uh, sort of the scope of this investigation and the aggressive tactics that are being used when there isn't uh, any public evidence to suggest these people pose a threat. In fact, the FBI spokesman said immediately after the raids that there wasn't a threat to the community. So it sort of leads to a question of why there there is this nationwide, you know, early morning raids as if uh, these are, are mafia groups when you know, it's clear from the materials that are being seized, the materials that are being uh, requested in the search warrant returns that are public, that a lot of this is associational information that's being requested, address books, computer records, uh, literature and advocacy materials, First Amendment uh, sort of uh, materials. So uh, this creates a huge chill beyond these activists or their associates to the entire advocacy community, where you know, again, these people, as, as already stated, have long-standing advocacy uh, histories, you know, are organizers, know a lot of people in the community. Um, so it, it creates a chill throughout, and it, it damages our democracy, because people start to be afraid of participating in the political process. And, and that really is a huge problem uh, beyond, you know, the scope of just the individuals involved in this case. And, you know, the fact that the FBI is doing this with that, you know, and using terms like terrorism uh, to, to describe these individuals creates a huge chilling effect that we really have to be concerned about. Mike, I wanted to ask you, uh, I don't know if it's exactly related, but new details on how the United States um, has assembled a vast domestic intelligence apparatus to collect information about Americans using the FBI, local police, state homeland security offices and military criminal investigators. Another Washington Post expose on this, the FBI operating a massive database known as Guardian with the names and personal information of thousands of U.S. citizens and residents who've never committed a crime but were reported to have acted suspiciously by a local police officer or a fellow citizen. The database containing over 160,000 suspicious activity files. Despite the sweeping size of the database, The Washington Post reports, the FBI says it's resulted in only five arrests and no convictions. In addition, the Post reveals the FBI is storing 96 million fingerprints in Clarksburg, West Virginia. And The Post also reports that local law enforcement agencies have begun using surveillance equipment designed for war zones. In Memphis, Tennessee, some police patrol cars now contain military-grade infrared cameras that can snap digital images of one license plate after another while analyzing each almost instantly. Uh, Mike German, uh, you have worked in counterterrorism for years before being at the ACLU from 1988 to 2004. What's going on here? What are the dangers with this? Uh, well, you know, you might remember a program called Total Information Awareness that was uh, started right after 9-11, and the idea was if we can just grab all the available data that's out there, somehow we'll be able to, to manage it in a way that we'll know everything that's happening. And, and while Congress killed that specific program, that idea never disappeared. And the FBI appears to be at, at the center of one of these expansive collection programs. It's called eGuardian is the new one. Guardian is one that's been, been around for a while. Uh, but now there's a new one, eGuardian, that's part of a nationwide suspicious activity reporting uh, program that encourages state and local law enforcement agencies, as well as the general public, to report uh, behaviors that they describe as inherently suspicious. And these include things like uh, taking notes or drawing diagrams, taking measurements, taking photographs or video. Uh, so, of course, these are, are benign uh, activities that have no inherent suspicion uh, regarding them. So what we're concerned with is what people will really be reporting is people that, because of their own personal bias, are already suspicious of. You know, it won't be everybody who's taking notes. It's only going to be that that person who wears religious garb that they are, are you know, uh, religiously biased against or, you know, a person of a specific race or, or uh, nationality. So uh, what this allows, this sort of uh, 
reduction in standards allows the collection of material against people who are not even suspected of being involved in wrongdoing. And that is, is really an open door to abuse. And, and we have uh, Freedom of Information Act requests outstanding uh, for the eGuardian program. Uh, we're, we're interested in a lot of different new FBI programs. There's a domain management program, uh, which purports to allow the FBI to, to collect racial and ethnic demographic information and map our communities across the nation by race and ethnicity. So this, this again, the suspicionless collection of information is, is a huge and growing problem, and all this data uh, just is being warehoused, literally. I mean, that's what they call it, the investigative data warehouse. Uh, for any kind of, of abuse that might occur later. And, of course, uh, you know, the, the ACLU has already documented uh, these types of spying operations being directed against political advocacy in 33 stra states across the nation. In fact, when, when the, the latest Washington Post report came out, one of the uh, intelligence collection operations it focused on was the Tennessee Fusion Centers. And, and one of our uh, legal fellows became interested upon reading the article and went to the website. And sure enough, one of the suspicious activities reported on the website was an ACLU advocacy effort uh, regarding uh, the celebration of, of uh, religious uh, uh, activities in, in public schools. Uh, so clearly, they're collecting information about uh, political advocacy, and uh, this is part of the part of the larger problem across the country. Well, Mike, uh, I'd like to ask you, it, uh, it, this is not the first time in U.S. history that we've had these problems. I, I think back that you mentioned total inf information awareness, but going back even further, several decades right. ago, the Church Commission uncovered all kinds of, of spying by the U.S. government on uh, legal dissident groups uh, in the United States. And, uh, and of course, back in the 1920s, during the, the Palmer Raids, there was all kinds of government uh, attempts to round right. up people who were involved in what is normally legal. Uh, but opposition uh, politics uh, of, of one kind or another. Uh, this, uh, uh, how come there is so little outcry uh, in the general population of these enormous uh, uh, attempts by the government to take away civil liberties and to and to spy on on the citizens? Uh, you know, you're exactly right. There, there is you know a long history of abuse of secret. Uh, domestic intelligence powers. And that's why, after the Church Committee uncovered those abuses in the 1970s, there were guidelines put in place, the Attorney General guidelines, that required a reasonable suspicion of wrongdoing before the FBI could start aggressive investigations. And those were the standards that I operated on do doing domestic terrorism investigations. And I found they were very helpful, that what it did is it helped me focus on people who were actually doing bad things rather than people who were saying things that, that I didn't like or didn't agree with, and that that, that helped me use my resources in, in, a, in an efficient way to target the people who were doing bad things. And unfortunately, after 9-11, those standards have been uh, diluted significantly to where now the FBI literally requires no factual predicate uh, to start an investigation. Um, and as far as the, as the public outrage, a, a huge part of the problem is, again, these activities are taking place in secret. So it's hard to know uh, how they're impacting any particular group or individual. And that's why we set up a website, uh, the Spy Files website, aclu.org slash spy files, where we're collecting a lot of this material. Uh, and, you know, it's not just the FBI that's spying now. It's Department of Homeland Security. It's the Department of Defense. It's state and local law enforcement agencies that are involved in these activities. So, uh, you know, this Washington Post story, I think, will be a big help to, to let people know that, that, you know, your innocence doesn't protect you anymore, that, that you know, they can literally start collecting information on anyone. And, and you know, we had a recent case in Maryland uh, where the Maryland State Police were spying on political activists. And, you know, one of the activists said something very interesting to me. She said, you know, I was a, a Vietnam War protester, so when I became an, a war protester, uh, again, uh, 
you know, it, with the recent conflicts, uh, I kind of assumed that the government would be spying on me. But when I finally got those records back, what scared me more than anything was that m much of the information was wrong. They had me at demonstrations I, I wasn't at. They had me associated with groups I wasn't associated with. And that scared me more, because now my doing everything right and, and not being involved in violence wasn't going to protect me from their errors. And, and I could be associated with things that I wasn't actually doing. We only and, and that's really a big part of the problem. Is we only have 30 seconds, but I wanted to go back to Colleen Rowley, another a former FBI agent, on a related issue, um, and it's WikiLeaks. You have signed on, along with a number of other people, like uh, Larry Wilkerson, the former chief of staff of the secretary of state, Colin Powell, and uh, Dan Ellsberg, and British intelligence employee Catherine Gunn, to a letter that says WikiLeaks has teased the genie out of transparency out of a very opaque bottle, and powerful forces in America who thrive on secrecy are trying desperately to stuff the genie back in. As we wrap up this discussion, let's end up on WikiLeaks, Colleen. Well, I think there's a big tie-in between uh, transparency and knowing what your government is doing and what we just heard Mike German mention, which is this, these infiltrations without factual justification of advocacy groups. Uh, the, the Minneapolis case seems to have stemmed a lot from the lead-up to the Republican National Convention and the protests, where they, they simply targeted uh, protesters. And I think that if we had more transparency and we had ways of people telling the truth about what's going on, on, we would not actually see the. I, I'm very afraid we're doomed to repeat that terrible history of the COINTELPRO era and the House on American Activities. Well, we're going to have to leave it there. Colleen Rowley uh, and Mike German, both former FBI agents. Uh, Colleen Rowley, a whistleblower named Time Person of the Year in 2002. Mike German, now with the ACLU. Thanks so much for being with us. Uh, when we come back, we'll be in San Francisco with Roberto Lovato talking about one of the bills that didn't get passed by the um, lame-duck Senate, and it's the issue of immigration and the DREAM Act. Stay with us.